we're about to run through exactly how to make a YouTube end card template for your video end screens just like the one on screen now in just a few minutes with free software. And then I'll also show you how to use your new end card template in your video outros step by step. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. YouTube end cards are an incredibly powerful tool for increasing views across your channel, for linking viewers to related content, all while adding more value to your audience at the end of each video. This can also help with YouTube rankings by boosting viewer session time, which is a key metric for YouTube's algorithm. Now, while YouTube end cards alone are powerful, if you combine them with a simple end screen template that's baked into your videos, you can add a whole new level of pro to your content and more effectively help to guide your viewers to a clear next step. Step, whether that be a related video, a subscribe button, or an opt-in or some other call to action. So in this video, we're gonna step through exactly how to build a custom end screen template that looks professional, matches your branding, and that you can use in all of your future YouTube videos. Now for this walkthrough, I'm gonna be taking you through using a service called Snapper. It's simple, it's free, it's got some basic design functionality, which is more than enough for what we need here. But if you'd rather use something like Photoshop or something more advanced, then just follow along with the same steps or close to the same steps. Now, while we're running through, drop a comment down below and let us know what design software do you prefer to use and why. Okay, so we're gonna start out by showing you what an actual end card is. So after you've uploaded a video, then you have the opportunity to add an end card or an end screen. So hit edit on your video, come over to end screen and annotations, and this is where you can add in your end screen. So your end screens can go for a maximum of 20 seconds, and it is always the last 20 seconds or the last part of your video. You can have them shorter than 20 seconds, but no longer. And as we play through this now, you'll see this as an example. Now, if you're interested in a walkthrough on how to create professional hyperlapses on your camera or on your DSLR, then make sure you head over to Matt's channel with the link on screen. And also make sure you subscribe while you're there. You'll thank me later. And if you're looking to make Instagram stories like a pro. So you'll see in this example, we've got three elements that show up over that almost 20 seconds. The 20 second line is this one. It says it can't be any longer than 20. We've got this one starting a little bit less than that. And it'll bring up my subscribe button first or the picture of me. Then in this case, we're referencing off to Matt's channel. So we've got his subscribe button there as well. And then we're also referencing another video here which is shown last. Now all of these, you can actually just drag and drop and extend or shorten depending on uh, how long you want them on, on screen or timing them up to whatever you've said at the end of this video. But this whole thing can't go for more than 20 seconds. Some other really important things to note here is that there is the blue line around the outside here. All of these elements can't go outside that blue line. So we can pick them up, we can move them around, but you can see that we can't move them outside. So if I let go of that there now, that's as close to the edge as we'll be able to get it. Now you can also resize these elements as well. You can make them a little bit bigger. That is the biggest that they can be, and that is the smallest that they can be. And just the same with these subscribe icons, with these circle ones, you can pick those up and move them around, but you can't have any overlap. You see, if there's an overlap, it actually won't let you save that, and it's highlighted in red. So all the individual elements need to just be standalone. Now I need to show you all this up front because when we're creating our end slide or our end template, you'll be able to see what these elements are and how you can leverage these to make them stand out and fit your brand. Now, as you can see on the screen here, elements used three of four. You can have four items shown on the screen. Doesn't mean you need to use four. Typically what we'll have at the end of a video is one subscribe button. So the picture of my face somewhere on screen where someone can subscribe and we'll have links to two videos. So I'll come over here and go add an element. And in here you can choose another video or a playlist to link to. The subscribe buttons, which are these circle ones. You can promote another channel, which is how we had Matt on there just before. Or you can link to an approved website, which is usually just the website that is associated with your YouTube channel and verified with your YouTube channel. So to add, for example, another video, we come up here to create. You can either choose your most recent upload the best sort of suggested, auto-suggested video for your viewers based on what other videos they've watched, or you can choose a specific video or a playlist, either yours or somebody else's. In this case, let's go best for viewer, create the element, 
and you can see that is in there now as a placeholder. So to get creating your own end screen template, just open up one of your videos, come to end cards, get to this screen. And what we're gonna do is take a screenshot of this area so that we're able to get the sizing and everything right with these elements on screen. So if you're on Mac, you can use Command Shift number four, and you can draw out this area here. You wanna get as close to matching the video as you can. And we'll let go and that will save an image on our desktop. Now, if you're on Windows 10, you can use Windows Shift S to do exactly the same thing. You may then need to quickly open up Paint, paste in the image, and then save it out as a JPEG or as an image file. But we will be using that to create our template. Now we're gonna be using the platform Snapper. For this end screen graphic, you do wanna create this in the size that you're creating most of your videos. So if you're creating most of your videos at 1080p, then you wanna create a graphic here at 1920 by 1080. If you're creating most of your videos in 4K, then you'll wanna type in that 4K resolution here. But I probably imagine that most people at this point are creating videos in 1080, so we'll create a graphic at that resolution for this walkthrough and hit create. So what we're gonna do first off is bring in our graphic, our screenshot. So go over to graphics, go to upload. Let's choose upload an image and we'll find our screenshot on the desktop there. We'll click on that to drop it into our project and we're gonna scale it up so that it fits full screen. Again, doesn't worry about the quality here. We're really just looking at this to be the template guide of where all of our elements are able to sit. Great screenshot there. So now that we've got our template in there, the next step is to create some of these shapes as placeholders that we can use for videos. So we'll come over here to rectangle, position it over our video and scale that up so that it matches. Now obviously these are both exactly the same size. So we only need to make one of those and we can duplicate it. And likewise with the circle, go back to graphics, oh sorry, shapes, circle, and we wanna size this down so that the circles are about the same size. So now with all of these, these we can now use as template placeholders for any graphic elements that we want to use in our videos. So now that we've got those created, I'm gonna go ahead and hide that background and I'll drop the opacity down because it's not gonna be the focus of what we're creating here, but we can still use it as a guide in the background. So this is where you can get a little creative and you can bring in things like we've got our Primal Video logo here that we have just uploaded. I can click on that and bring this in. Uh, we can put this anywhere on the screen, it doesn't matter. Uh, Primal Video, we can add some text. Let's choose subscribe. We'll make it our Primal Video font, which is Oswald. We can also come in and add some other graphic elements under graphics, icons, and search for things like, there you go, arrow. So we can bring in an arrow to point to our subscribe button. Uh, there's a heap of different graphics and things in here that you can use. Something like this. And we can point it to the subscribe button and maybe change the color. And you can make it red so it stands out. I guess the biggest thing you need to decide at this point is what do you want your end screens to look like? And that's really gonna come down to whether you're going to have yourself on screen in your videos at this point. So for us, going back to our background image, you can see that we only use half the screen. I'm still on screen talking throughout. And then we have these other elements that are showing off off to the side here. So if you're not gonna have yourself on screen, then you've got all of this space here to play with. So you could have one video over here one video up here. You could have your subscribe button in the middle with the arrow pointing to it. Scale that down. And you could even have a call out on each of these. So we can click on this and come up the top to duplicate layer. And we could say, watch this one next. This one here could be YouTube recommended video. And obviously you can get a little bit more fancy with that and add some sort of background to it. If you wanted, it could be a, an image. It could be a pattern. Maybe you go in the wood grain look. You can also add some effects to your backgrounds. So you could darken it off a little and then change up your text to, so it stands out, maybe a white or a bright color. So you can start to get creative this way if you're not going to be on screen, but you will wanna remember the template here and just make sure that all of the elements, wherever you're moving them on the screen, needs to be inside of that blue line. So you can see with our gray box here, we can move it as far as there. 
And with this one, we've got all the way up to the side here if we choose to go that far. The text and all the other elements can go anywhere, but as long as these elements that people are going to pick from are inside that blue line, then you're going to be sorted. So I'll fade that graphic back down now. Now, if you are gonna have yourself on screen like we typically do at the end of ours, then you come over here to background, you can remove the background so that it's gone. You can then add some shapes and graphics so that they stand out here to separate yourself. So we could create a background piece. I'm gonna change the color of this one. Change the color of it to our Primal Video Blue. And we'll scale that up and we'll position it off to the side here. We will rotate that. Now we're only really gonna use this edge here. So bring that back up here. Okay, now we wanna send this graphic to the back. So we'll come up here with it selected and choose move layer back. We'll keep clicking on this until all these other things are on top of it. So this is building out something more in line with what we have been using on Primal Video. So we'll move this down, we'll bring up our template actually, our graphic background so that we can see our areas again. So that's too far, so we'll bring this up to here. And maybe we'll have another video over here as well, up in the top. Your subscribe button can be around there on that center point of that line that we've added. Could even put the subscribe button at the top here, rotate that arrow around. We'll move this text up here. Watch this next, it's gonna be way too big, so we'll make that a lot smaller. Watch this next, just put it down here. Actually, we'll get rid of this one. We'll just duplicate this one, duplicate. And YouTube suggests this one. You can really put whatever you'd like in here text-wise, but just to call them out and make them a little bit different. And maybe we'll make the primal video in the top corner there a little bit smaller. And you might also wanna add another shape just to make it look a little bit more different as well. So we could probably add another rectangle here and again, rotate that. And we will send it to the back again. So it's behind all of these other things. So our logo is on top of it. Okay, so you start to see the elements and things that you can add in here. And obviously these gray things, when we save them out, you don't wanna have these in here. And these are just where you're going to be positioning your videos on your end cards. But what you can do to take this one extra step further is to duplicate these. So if we select this and go duplicate, and let's change the color of it. So with it selected, we'll come back up here to solid color. Let's choose white and let's position it over it and let's make it a little bit bigger. And we'll send it behind. So we'll keep clicking this until it goes behind. And now we wanna position this like a border that we can drop our element onto. So when we export this onto into our video editing application, it's gonna look like that, and then we put our placeholder on there inside of the YouTube end cards on top of it, so it'll look like we've got a border around it. And likewise, if you wanna create borders for these two as well, we can duplicate one of them, hit duplicate. We can select it, and we can come up here and change the color of it. Let's choose white again, and let's make it a little bit bigger, and we'll send it behind the other one. Now, once again, we wanna bring up our template in here too to make sure that everything is still positioned right. So we'll select our background layer, we'll bring up our template. Now we may actually need to move this layer forward. There we go, so we can see it. So you can see here, the border doesn't need to be inside the blue line, but the box definitely does. Once we've got that set up the way that we want, we could just duplicate this top part. So we can even delete the bottom one here. We've got it already set up as a placeholder. Select the background, select the foreground, duplicate, move it down. I've knocked it a little bit, so I'll need to move it back. And reposition everything back up. And you can see now we've got some clear callouts for these. Before we save this out, we wanna make sure that we're deleting our background layer or our template that we'd added. So select on that and either drop the opacity down to zero or just hit delete and delete it, and this is now our template. Just before we export these out, we can get rid of our placeholders. So just select them and press delete. And then come up here and choose download. Make sure that transparent background is ticked and choose high res PNG. So now we're in our editing software. We wanna grab that end screen and drop it down into your timeline towards the end of the video and you wanna stretch it out so that it runs for the maximum of 20 seconds. We'll stretch that out. 
This is just a test project that we've got. But you can see we've got our end screen here showing up and we've got our video below it. So I'll talk normally here and then at this point, the end screen is shown. So at this point in our timeline, we want to make a cut on the bottom layer and we'll want to reposition me in this shot so that I fit on this end screen. So we can click and drag bottom video layer, reposition me across something like that. And the video plays back with our end card on top of it at that point. So we'll go ahead and export that now and I'll take it over to YouTube and show you how to add in these elements. All right, our test video is uploaded. We've gone across to the end screen and annotations. We're down to the last 20 seconds, and this is where we want to start building this out. So we're going to add in an element here for our subscribe button. And there it is. We'll position it over on our circle. Now you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to reposition this round. And if you hold down shift, you'll get some finer adjustment to center it on screen where you'd like it. And now we'll add in a video, best one for viewer or YouTube recommended video. Let's put this one down the bottom here. Again, you use the arrow keys to center it on there. And we'll also add in another video at the top, which is our video that we suggest for them to watch and move it around. And that's how easy it is. So in the last 20 seconds of the video, this now becomes active with buttons on there that's looking super professional. So that's how you can create your own custom YouTube end screen template and use it in your videos for all of your future YouTube videos. Now, there's two videos linked on screen. The first one is an interview that we did with Roberto Blake talking all around branding and how to grow on YouTube. The second one is a suggestion from YouTube. Hope it's good. Let me know. See you soon.